Cool. So our last presenter for the API product and community segment today is from Div Manikam, mentor and facilitator at Women in APIs. She is going to share a true story of APIs and herself, but unfortunately, she couldn't join us here live, but she has uh, she was kind enough to record it for us. Um, let's listen to her narrative. So we can we can start playing the video. Hi, everyone. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so our last presenter for the API product and community segment today is from Divya Manikam. She is the mentor and facilitator at Women in APIs. She is going to share a true story of APIs and herself. Uh, unfortunately, she couldn't join us here live, but she was uh, kind enough to send a recorded session so uh we'll be we will be watching that for the next 20 minutes uh on on her uh, story of um apis and herself her experience If you're just waiting for the video to launch, uh, bear with us. Hi everyone, thank you for joining today. Today I'm going to talk to you about API narrative, a true story of APIs and I. Now imagine a world where business and IT are speaking the same language of APIs. They have shared OKRs, whether it's about influence or impact. And every day we wake up to be inspired by these power of APIs. Now, if you could say the same narrative, whether it's all the way from API design to API lifecycle management, how awesome it would be. So join me in this session to hear my story of how I joined the API movement as a product marketing manager for API management at Boomi in 2016, and now in um, 2020 advocating for women in APIs to bring diversity and belonging around the world. Thank you so much for joining. Let's dive in. So we'll kick it off with a short agenda where I'll give you a little bit about me um, how I see API as a, in, 
business viewpoint, the rise of the API economy, some of the digital transformation trends that's driving this, and then also talk to you a little bit about our membership with women in APIs. So a little bit about me. Um, I am a big advocate for women in APIs and also a champion um, and an ambassador at the Product Marketing Alliance. And what you're seeing is what I call the picture perfect introduction. Um, I think a picture speaks a million words. So here is a little bit about me. I, I'm a true believer of mindfulness, essentialism, diversity and belonging. And I go by three core values, inspire, influence and impact. And whatever I do, however I do it, I give my heart and soul to it. So I'll walk you through my journey as we go through the rest of the day today. Here is a philosophy and a thought process that has helped ground me in my um, decisions and how I operate. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. So when I took the initiative of joining the API team, I needed to understand what API is and make sure that I can explain it simply enough. So what I started off with is the journey of what is an API. Now let's talk about a business viewpoint. And so I looked at what commonalities we could have with our sales team and the analogy that I came up with, um, which I found online, which was pretty smart, was think of APIs as a menu. And by the way, it's API, not IPA. I know you're all thinking about the drink. Now, the menus that you get are the list of dishes. These could be someone ordering um, a specific dish. We all love restaurants, so it was a great way to kind of tie those two synergies together. And then when you think about APIs, it's those list of commands that's going through, and then what's coming back is the response that's coming. Now, what's driving this big shift and why API is getting all the attention that it's getting is because now it's not just about creating products. Now it's about creating products and services that are now transforming to become a platform. And that shift has led to all the conversations going forward. So I actually like to think about where APIs are today. And APIs are everywhere, right? Look at your smartphone, you will see them in action. From searching for your weather to placing an order, um, whether it's a retail store or a restaurant or even Uber rides, checking your balance on the phone. All of these things are individual APIs, whether it's a weather API, a retail shipping API, banking API, they're all powered through a single source. And that's the beauty of this all coming together. So here's a question for all of you. I know we all love a good API and um, we're all just passionate and that's why a conference like API Days exists. And it's tremendous to see the growth and momentum that the conference has gotten so far with all of you evangelists out there. So in the chat, if you could add, what's your favorite API? I would love to see that. And also um, kind of build a conversation going forward. So when I think about what is driving this rise, for an API economy. And there's some really good resources out there. Um, Rakuten put this one out called the evolution of APIs and where you can see the two um, endpoints, right? The API provider and the API consumer. And the shift came when it went from software as a service to XS, which is everything as a service. Now, anything could become a service. And APIs were feeding that analogy. It was driving the conversation. It became part of, hey, I have a business process. I have a product. I have a data point. How can I convert that into a business process? And then APIs also became that end-to-end -end, um, spectrum of putting the connection between the end user in some form, of, some form of notification or methodology. Now, this is all great. So I wanted to take it a step further and say, hey, where is the future of APIs? And when I think about APIs and, and the analogy that we had um, within um, Boomi was thinking about open banking, thinking about PSD2 and the API economy, the shift that's come with compliance. 
And API mediation became that aspect of taking it from the customer experience, whether you're looking at an online banking, mobile banking app, fintech app, or any third party, to the banking services that exist, which could be applications, it could be a database, it could be big data, it could be any variation of it. So making sure you have that API mediation was key. And then on the right, these are the direction that future of APIs are going, right? Providing a better API experience on your mobile devices, new business models, better standardization, so that it's not um, a wild, wild west out there, and then rise of microservices. And you're also seeing API-driven architecture for end user apps. This is all great, but I think the one thing that actually caught my attention as a business user was APIs as that information super highways for your enterprise. Now, that's probably a language that if you told me as a business um, evangelist, I would say that actually piqued my interest. Let, let, tell me more, I wanna learn more, right? So that's a shift that we're seeing. And so you're seeing more and more of these API trends going forward. And it'll be interesting to see how this shapes up in the future too. So let me actually dive into a few examples of what digital transformation looks like and what are those API trends that we're seeing, right? I think this past year has given us enough validation that we need the world to be more connected and that we need more channels of engagement. Who would have thought that we would have online order pick and then curbside pickup? I didn't, but the reality is it's all happening. There are countless use cases out there, whether it's bringing the technologies together or it's driving that innovation. And I think API plays a pivotal role in these trends. So let me talk to you a little bit about digital transformation and then we can dive into some other examples. So here is another study that I had come across to help explain why APIs were important. And the study was by Forrester in 2018 called the sorry state of digital transformation. Now you may be wondering why is it sorry state? It's digital transformation, the best thing ever, right? The reality is when they asked uh, organizations what their firm's digital transformation state looks like, about 56% said they're currently underway, which is great. Um, about 15% were investigating, about 7% were improving, but they were not quite transforming. And then 21% said they were completed. Now, the reality is a digital transformation is not an end state, it's a journey. And so you are always going to be in that journey because there's always, always going to be something that's going to disrupt either you or your industry, and we have to be ready for it. Right, so when we think about the journey that customers are going through or organizations are going through, they're trying to improve their interactions, whether it's with their customers, their partners, or their lines of business. And APIs were viewed as that means to an end. Now, what organizations needed to shift was, think about that overall strategy where they're growing their businesses and they're scaling application development. Now, as part of that scale, it needed to become an enterprise-wide strategy. Right? So it's not just a one state um, that we're looking at. Now, digital transformation is hard because in reality, there's a lot that we can learn from it, never mind how we want to accomplish it. So this is another um, research that they've conducted based on a digital process automation survey. And the, the good part about this is you can see the shift that's happening. And this was a study in 2018. So think about where we are now. Right. Um, about two years ago, everything that was important was here. When we asked the question, what is your primary focus for process improvement efforts? And it's interesting that in 2016, everything was about cost reduction. And then in 2018 and then in 2020, it went all the way down because it was no more about just cost reduction. They wanted more. Then you also saw this improved customer experience, which kind of went up significantly. And then in 2020, you kind of saw that to be around 28%, which is good. But then if you go all the way down, right, we also have regulatory compliance, which probably is picking up more than you would think. We have uh, worker productivity, 
which is going down relatively. And then you also see this, which is Axelry Digital Business Transformation, which was at a 13% in 2016, and then it rose to 32%, and then in 2020, around 49%. And I'm pretty sure this is a significant growth trajectory that you're seeing. Now, what this shows is digital transformation is not just a fad. It's here for real. And customers are starting to ask more and more about, hey, what can you do to improve, whether it's my customer experience, whether it's employee productivity, whether it's a compliance, all of those things are being tied together to help think about business transformation as an end to end not just change one system here it's a process change it's many things together so what customers are saying is i do not really want to see fragmented data or organizations and that's actually impeding a customer journey so how can you bridge the gap between all of them and can think of me as a single entity as one source across all of the experiences whether it's your website whether it's your marketing whether it's how um, you engage with your customers as part of implementation or support, all of those things actually need to come together. And that's where the digital experience uh, narrative comes for, right? Customers don't really care about whether you have silos, they really want to complete their journeys. Now, that's where I see a great potential for our 2021 trends that Google Cloud had put together as the five trends for digital transformation. There's an increase in rise for SaaS and hybrid, right? Whether it's your cloud API deployments, analytics are becoming more and more important to be that competitive edge. You're also seeing AI and ML driving some of the powered API management, right? You're also seeing that API ecosystems are becoming innovation drivers and the API security and governance is more important than ever because it's not just making sure that you are protecting yourself, it's also making sure you're protecting your customers that you are providing the governance that's needed. And this is interesting because if you look at this, the um, pandemic and the 2020 has actually led to about three fourths of organizations continuing their digital transformation investments. And two thirds of those companies are increasing their investments to become digital first. Now, digital transformation relies on organizations to package their services, competencies, assets all together so that you can repeatedly leverage them, right? Now, what is happening is APIs are driving those synergies and they're letting developers easily access and combine digital assets together irrespective of where those systems are, which in prior years, you would have used the word interoperability or they were not interoperable. But now APIs are how software talks to each other, how APIs can be designed with a developer experience in mind and provide the end-to-end -end experience that customers are asking for. And it's, a, it's an exciting time. I'm really excited to see this shift. So let's actually talk a little bit about what does that mean for us as individuals and how is this going to drive some of our momentum? So here's another research that I came across which um, Gartner had provided to talk about the different types of roles that are coming into play. So initially you have seen integration specialists um, where they're all focused about enterprise services and data processing. Then we saw a shift in line of business users, where we call them ad hoc integrators, if you will. Then we saw in citizen integrators, where all the business users now are saying, hey, I should have the ability to leverage the data as I need them um, to provide for projects that I'm working on. And then you're seeing this bigger shift of digital integrators, where these could be automation, these could be digital business projects, it could be conversational um, user experience. It could be many things. And you can see the shift in the size of those roles, right? Where you had probably one integration specialist. Now you're probably thinking of hundreds and thousands of um, roles that are being created. And in that shift is also another amazing trajectory that we're seeing where the female developer population has actually increased. And this is something that Slash Data had shared as part of their developer economics in 2021. And 
I'm really excited to see that shift happening because this is something that we can actually drive as individuals at this conference and also um, promoting diversity and inclusion going forward. So we have currently seen about 5 million female developers in the world. And every quarter they're tracking this to see what that growth is and it's doubled in um, two years. So I'm looking forward to help be an advocate and also be a champion to bring those forward together. So let's actually build that next evolution of APIs together. And one of the things that I'm really excited to share is being a member of the Women in APIs community, where you can bring together opportunities, whether it's um, an opportunity like this one, where you are getting a chance to share your perspective and your uh, viewpoints. Um, we have a guest speaking um, a facilitation. I also see that the future of APIs is evolving and there's a better balance that we can bring, whether it's your creative social solutions that you have. There's also need for better balance and attracting and retaining more women in the industry. And Women in APIs is an example of a community initiative that's taking this into action, where they're providing peer-to-peer -peer speaking and working events. And you can find out more and learn about women in APIs at apidays.global. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of us out there and actually being an advocate and championing some of those things forward. So I want to really thank each of you for taking the time today. And I'll leave you with one last note, which is something that I came across um, when I was attending WordFest Live um, a few weeks ago where they talked about API and I had this session in mind. And so when I saw it, I thought this was really brilliant where they said API equal to assume positive intent. So whether you are sitting in a room or uh, virtually in a room, having a conversation with your business counterparts or you are the business uh, having a conversation with your technical counterparts, Assume positive intent because all of us are trying to achieve the same uh, results and we're all working together to make that happen. So take the time and I encourage each of you to whenever you think about API, also think about assume positive intent. I would love to stay in touch and happy to answer any questions or follow up that you may have. Some of the things that have actually led me to where I am today uh, is all thanks to my mentors and the API community in itself. So I wanna extend a big thank you to all of you for your time today. And if you are interested to connect, just reach out, um, whether it's about uh, APIs or whether just wanna say hi, and um, I would love to hear from all of you. Thank you so much for your time today. And I appreciate everything that you're doing. Have a great day.